Hi, I'm Scott Fajette, Product Manager for Dreamweaver at Adobe. I'd like to tell you a little bit today about some of the great new features we have in, in Dreamweaver 1103, a free update that's now available through the Adobe Update Manager, or you can go to get it directly from adobe.com. So unless you've been hiding under a rock lately, you've probably heard the terms HTML5 and CSS3. Uh, these represent the cutting edge of today's standards, uh, and everyone wants to start playing around with them as soon as possible to understand how they can make our workflows and our project loads better and easier. So uh, let's take a look at what we've done to enable these features directly within Dreamweaver. Starting with, we updated WebKit to now render all of the HTML5 and CSS3 goodness. In this case, we've got a menu system here that's using CSS3 transitions for a nice, smooth, easy in and out effect here. And we're, we're using CSS rounded corners, the border radius property, to give nice rounded corners. This is something you used to have to go out to Photoshop or an image editing app to create. So let's take a look at um, sort of some of the things you can do with HTML5 and CSS3, but I'd like to actually look at it through a, a particular focus, uh, multi-screen. So along with HTML5 and, and CSS3, uh, what everyone's talking about today is mobile development. Uh, from the iPhone to Android, there's a variety of mobile devices that are now accessing the web uh, with rapid pace. And as web designers, we need to start taking account for these devices in our projects. So one of the great new features of the 1103 update for Dreamweaver is the ability to really work in a multi-screen environment uh, effectively. In this case, we've got a desktop application here, a desktop site. I'll jump into design view. It's pretty standard, laid out for a wide screen. But what we'd like to do is take this site and sort of bring it forward into the modern age and make it more relevant for, for multi-screen uh, viewing. Let's start with phone. Uh, now, one of the new features we have in 1103 is the multi-screen preview panel. And from here, you can get to some of the more esoteric stuff underneath the hood. By clicking this, I immediately get three previews here. Uh, there's small, medium, and large relating to phone, tablet, and a desktop browser. Now, right now, they're all showing exactly the same layout. But what we want to do is start using the power of CSS3, in particular, CSS3 media queries, to take control of each one of these resolutions and give a specific interface for it. So we don't have to cram a big, wide menu into a small, narrow phone or kind of deal with some of the constraints of mobile on a wide desktop browser. Let's take a look at how we can do this. Now, we've got these three already, uh, phone, tablet, and desktop. We can jump into viewport sizes if we want to change the defaults. You know, we're starting with 320 pixels being the width for a phone, for example. Uh, if you have very specific uh, requirements for your projects, you can come over here and specify custom viewport sizes for your phone, tablet, and desktop ranges. Or we're just going to stick with the defaults. And let's just immediately begin applying some media queries to them. Now, by jumping into the media queries dialog, uh, I have the ability to attach a particular CSS file to each of these resolution classes. So let's start with the phone. I'm going to use an existing CSS file. We'll come over here to this area, and I'll jump into my CSS area. Fortunately, I've already created some style sheets for this. Uh, and we're going to start with phone, so I'll go with phone.css. Let's go ahead and choose this. We've attached that. Um, let's go ahead and choose tablet. CSS. And for the desktop, we're going to use the existing CSS file, which I've called, strangely enough, desktop.css. Now that I've created these, um, we've again picked these from existing CSS files, but I could create a new CSS file in a folder, uh, begin sort of building up the CSS for each of these particular views as needed. Uh, we'll just sort of work the way you're working already. So we've now defined all these style sheets. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and you'll see a few things happen. Uh, now those, all these layouts have snapped into place right the way you'd expect. So we've now got a mobile, uh, a phone screen uh, style sheet that's giving us a nice one column layout for the navigation, which really looks the way we'd expect. Uh, on tablet, we're adopting more of a desktop look, taking advantage of the wider screen. But we're only using two columns down here below, whereas if we were to go back over to the desktop, we've we've decided to use the full width and, and actually go to three columns. So as you can see, using CSS3 media queries and the new multi-screen preview panel in Dreamweaver 1103 is a great way to start taking your projects and make them immediately relevant to a multi-screen world. Now, along with this, you'll notice we talked a little bit earlier about some of the advanced constructs of this site itself. Simple things um, that allow the experience with HTML5 and CSS3 to be just that much richer for you and your clients. For example, Let's take a look at this menu system here. As I'm hovering over these, um, these menu items, I get a nice smooth animation, and we've got that rounded corner effect in, from CSS3 as well. So let's go ahead and add some of these advanced design constructs using CSS3 and HTML5 right here within Dreamweaver's coding surface. 
So we've got the menu. Again, it's blocky, no, no aesthetically pleasing rounded corners, and really ugly sort of blocky rollover animation as you'd expect. Let's just jump into the CSS file over here, and we'll get down to the section uh, that starts to define these characteristics. Uh, for example, uh, we've got this area here that defines the border, but let's just go ahead and, and add that border radius to it. Now, border radius is a simple property within HTML or within CSS3, but there are also some variants specific to some of the browsers, in particular Mozilla and WebKit, that you may want to add to guarantee backwards compatibility. So we'll just, we'll just jump to the next line here. I'm going to start typing border. As we get to border, sure enough, I can roll down and we can find border radius in that list. And let's just go ahead and define that six pixels. Now we want to go through and add the WebKit and Mozilla version of this. So we'll use the dash notation. I'll just hit the dash and immediately I get Moz and WebKit. I can go down to WebKit first. Say WebKit, type the beginning of border and there's WebKit border radius. Let's add that at six pixels too. And go ahead and do the same thing for Mozilla. Mozilla border dash radius, there we go, and six pixels. So, code hinting is just following me all along through here, uh, helping me out as we go, even with the advanced uh, browser-specific selectors. Um, so we've got it, done that, let's go ahead and update this and take a peek at this. There we go, we've got those nice rounded corners on it. But next up, we want to take care of this transition effect, which is, which is pretty horrid. So let's, um, let's jump in and actually add some of the CSS3 transitions. Uh, in this case, we're going to want to do this for WebKit, since we're using WebKit. I'll, I'll just type in WebKit transition, and we can get right to, right to the meat of this. So duration, let's just make a, a half a second uh, duration, and we'll go ahead and just jump right back into the transition hinting again. Let's go to the property. So let's say margin top is what we want to animate. That way we can sort of change the width and make that nice push effect. Margin top. And finally, let's give it a, a nice ease in, ease out effect. So transition, and that's the timing function. Let's choose ease in, in, ease in and out, and we'll go ahead and save that and refresh. And now as I roll over, see we get that nice CSS3 transitional effect on top of this. So as you see, Dreamweaver 11.03 is a lot more than just an update with a few little bug fixes and patches. There's a lot of really great features that can start help you, helping you right now take your skills and apply them to a multi-screen world. Uh, features like the multi-screen preview panel and media queries management, along with the great code hinting and management features behind the scenes to help you get to all the details and nuts and bolts of the HTML5 and CSS3 specs in your projects, we've got you covered. So again, if you've got Dreamweaver CS5, all you need to do is run the Adobe Update Manager and pull down the update, or go to adobe.com and download it from the Support Center as well. If you have any questions about Dreamweaver, of course, be sure and visit the Adobe Developer Connection and read all the great articles and tutorials we have up to hopefully get you started, answer questions you may have. Thanks a lot. I hope you enjoy the great new features of Dreamweaver 1103. We'll see you next time. Thank you.